She says, Dear Al Alan Simon, is it true that owls can see in the back of their head? Well, that's a great question, Deborah Daisy. And here to answer that question today, we have Ollie Owl. So we're going to take a look at Al and Ollie Owl. flexible neck, an extra twisty neck. That's, uh, that's one way we're able to twist our necks like that. So. Wow, did I hear you correctly? Twice the number of vertebrae that humans have? Uh, okay, please continue. Okay, uh, well in addition to those extra vertebrae, we have these really large holes in our vertebrae, and you may know that your blood often flows through your vertebrae, and those extra large holes make it so when we twist our neck, you know, uh, the, that blood flow does not get pinched. You know, if you like, you're trying right now. If you're humans, and they try and twist their neck, their blood flow gets pinched, and it kind of stops them from being able to twist their neck. Not us owls. <laughs> extra large cavities, extra vertebrae make a big difference. Okay, I think that explains how you can see in the back of your head. But my next question is, why? Why can't you just move your eyes like like most animals? <laughs> That's how I see in the back of my head. I just move my eyes. <laughs> Okay, well, L -L -S, owls are usually nocturnal hunters, so we need extra large eyes to be able to take in that light. And unfortunately, uh, we have some kind of small heads here. So we have rod-shaped eyes, which help us take in more light. And so okay, rod-shaped eyes don't allow you to turn your eyes, so that's why you, you turn your neck like that? But why do owls need rod-shaped eyes? Why don't just have regular eyes? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, uh, our heads are kind of small, so... We can't fit those big eyes, so we develop these rod-shaped eyes to help us see. Well, I certainly think you have a beautiful head, even if it is small, Ollie. <laughs> thank you, Ollie. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, well, Ollie, I think I know, but can you tell me, in our audience, what type of owl are you, Ollie? I'm a beautiful snowy owl. Mm -hmm. uh, ML, mm -hmm. snowy owl. That's Ollie the snowy owl. ML was correct. A snowy owl. <laughs> okay, Ollie. And can you tell our audience a little bit about where you're found, what your habitat is, or where your range and habitat is? Uh, yes, LL, you can find us in the northern part of the United States, up to Canada, to Alaska, to the Arctic Circle, all the way up to Greenland. That's uh, that's where we make our habitat and do our breeding. Ah, uh, north, north, northern America is a little cold for for LL. Greenland's a little cold, but I don't know. LL does not like the cold, Ollie. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, some years we're actually found in Florida and all the way down to Texas, so you can come down there. Texas and Florida? <laughs> well, LL is not a big fan of the heat either, but I'll tell you what, Ollie, if you make it down to Texas or Florida, LL and Simon will come visit you. <laughs> Sounds like a deal, LL. Sounds like a deal. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Ollie. I think that's about all the time we have for today. Oh, wait. One more question from Simon. Simon, what is Ask him what a rapper is, LL. Okay, Ollie, could you tell us what is a raptor and are you snowy owls? Are you raptors? Uh, 
Uh, yes, snowy owls are raptors, and raptors are birds of prey, or birds that eat other animals. And you may not know this, LL, but raptor comes from the word Latin, it means to rob or steal. We don't steal, we just eat other animals. <laughs> and then robber, don't call me raptors. Well, there you have it. It seems snowy owls are indeed raptors. Alright, well, please join us next time when our next guest will either be Rocky Raccoon or Super Kid. Thank you, everyone. This is LL Lapper. And all the owls.